shrimp from hell. <laughs> now listen, I want you to use the opportunity now. If there's anyone who wants to order a drink, oh, that's good. <laughs> no, because I'm going to be ready to tell you a little story here, so feel free if you want to order a drink, because you die after doing my balance <laughs> if you order a drink. Anyway, I experienced something very traumatic on my way up here to sing for you good folks. <laughs> now this was Wednesday. Now understand Lloyd, do you know Lloyd the proprietor of this club? Okay. <laughs> Wonderful, isn't it? Did you taste the food? Because you can't see here, it's great. Okay. Now Lloyd, the last time I came up, I came up in July, and Lloyd was so gracious to come. Boy, shit, he should have been gracious. I was gonna get to do him a favor. So he came down. <laughs> to pick me up. Now this time, he said to me, Vivian, I'm kind of busy up here. I'm gonna send a friend down to pick you up. So I said, fine. So this friend calls about the day or two before we were getting ready to leave on Wednesday, and she says, I will be by your house at 11 o'clock to pick you up. So I told Eddie, my company, I said, okay, now let's be ready. I'll be by your place at 11.30. So we were packed, ready to go. Well, 11 o'clock came. 11.30 came, 12 o'clock came, one, let's put it like this, I saw young and restless, bold and beautiful, and was in the middle of as the world turned, when I get a call from this lady, and she says, girl, I had a rough night last night, and I'm running late. I call Eddie, tell him, okay, we're gonna be running a little late, so he says, okay, fine. Okay. She then says that she's gonna be at my place a bit, bit later. She's coming from Yonkers. Okay, so I'm waiting. Ding-a-ling-a-ling, the phone rings. She says, girl, now my address, we'll say for, the, for you all, that my address is 201, this is true, 201 West Something Street. Got that? Now yeah, I want you to remember that this is very important. 201 West Something Street. She said, girl, I'm at the corner of West End and Something Street. I said, well, in which direction are you facing? Because you're driving. She said, I'm facing north. I said, well, you make a right onto Something Street. Go to the end of the block. I'm in the last building on the left. You'll see a huge driveway. Now, we're talking about West End to my place, 10 seconds tops. <laughs> I called Eddie. I said, get, get yourself ready. We're leaving. Take my bag downstairs. I was down there 25 minutes. <laughs> now, I've come to the conclusion at this point that she has a wrong address. Something has happened. Either she turned left and didn't turn right. So, I tell the doorman to look out for her. I go down to the corner. We're certainly at Western Avenue. There is a large high-rise, big high-rise with a huge driveway. I go in there and I say to the doorman, has there been a lady in here asking for Vivian Reed? He said, yeah, twice. I said, what is the address of this building? He said, 205. So I said, okay, well, she has 205. That's what she has in her head. So I head on back up to my building, and I see this lady standing out in front of the driveway, my driveway. I said, are you Lynn? I didn't mean to call that name. Anyway, I said, are you Lynn? And she said, yes. I said, girl. What address do you have? I think you got to walk. What address do you have? She said, 201 West something street. I said, did I miss something here? Why was she at 205? So I said, okay, fine. Let's get in the car. We get in the car. On our way now to Eddie's to go pick up Eddie. By the time she went through two red lights, <laughs> I had ascertained that in her head, Red meant go. <laughs> so when we got, this is a true story, this, I am not telling any lies up here. When we got to West End and I saw that her foot was not coming off that accelerator pedal as we were heading through that run, and I said, move over! <laughs> I am driving this car and I drove all the way up here. Now, <laughs> we out here on Route 6, baby. Now, the trip itself was uneventful. Everything was going fine. We get to Route 6, 
and I say, oh, this must be my imagination. Do I see blue lights in the back of me? <laughs> I look to see if there's something in front, something in back. No, I'm the only car out there. And the man is saying, pull over. So I pull over. He comes over and he says, may I see your license and the uh, registration for the car? So it was a rented car, so she pulled out the papers, gave him the license, he went back and checked. Well, darling, don't you know that he came back to that car and told us that we would have to get out that car because the car was going to be impounded because the registration had been revoked. Well, Jesus, I could not believe this. So I told him we're on our way to this club to do a show and we have rehearsals and blah, 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 blah. And he felt very sorry and he did offer to bring us here. But I said, okay, well, you know, we got lucky. She said, well, there's not enough room, so can I call someone for you? And that's when I called Lloyd, or he called Lloyd. So he came back to me, he said that Lloyd had been called and he was gonna be coming to pick us up. <coughs> Meantime, the tow truck comes, the car is up in the air, <laughs> slanted, and our baggage is along Route 6. <laughs> <laughs> Microphone stand and all. <laughs> Now, if you remember on Wednesday night, it was chilly. Remember that? We are freezing our asses off. He says, why don't you go and sit in the back of the car? Just three of us. Go sit in the back of the car. Now, Eddie did not know that I was claustrophobic. Has anybody here ever been in the back of a police car? <laughs> Have you? Anybody? Oh, that's not. Darling, it's a sight. They got bars on the window. It is terrible. That would keep, alone that would keep me from doing a crime just to get in that car. But anyway, so he doesn't know that I'm claustrophobic. So we get in the car and we're warm. About a minute after we're in the car, he said, oh, you know something? We're locked in here and can't get out. <laughs> I started palpitating. <laughs> I said, no, you don't understand, I'm claustrophobic. I said, no, we, I, I gotta get out of here. Lynn looks at me and says, Anyway, that's all to say that I finally arrived and I'm here with you. <laughs>